MichaelMcFadden.com. On tonight's show, the question is simple. Are you marriage material? Ha-ha. Because joining me tonight, my man, Mo Stegel. He has a new book called From the Hands of Delilah to the Arms of Samson. And we're talking about marriage material. And did you know that, like, most people that get engaged, I think the number statistically was like 60% most hit. 60% of people that get engaged won't get married, and he'll tell you why. Also, tonight, my man Michael Buckholtz, multi-platinum producer, he's on a mission. And you'll learn a lot about it tonight. You'll learn a lot about Michael's mission and what Michael has going on. I'm telling you, it's going to be a great show tonight. Also, we got what's on Nikki's iPod. Uh, it, it was, um, man, I think I guess it was a runaway tonight. <laughs> yeah, Joe to see Jimi Hendrix, Shaka Khan. Guess who won? You'll find out tonight. Also, the normal cast is stopping by. Our sports guy, Keith Roberts, is stopping by. Nisi G is stopping by. She has the latest numbers on the President of the United States, Chad Johnson, and the latest on the Trayvon Martin case. Hey, so do me a favor. Join the conversation. It's very simple. All you got to do is dial 347-994-2063. You can also check us out at michaelmcfadden.com on Twitter. DC two ACL and on Facebook, Real Talk with Michael McFadden. Hey, got a great show tonight. So do me a favor, don't go nowhere because when we come back to answer your question, Nisi G is in the building with what's going on, and I think I got a new song all the way over from Cross Seas. Did Nikki say I'm falling in love with my uh, UK brothers and sisters and their music? Yeah, I am. So guys, don't go anywhere. When we come back, Nick B. G is in the building. Well, tell. Yeah. First up, tonight, I'm honored to have him in the building. I think, I think we put this together about a month ago. Shout out to Nikki and Michael's team for getting this together. Thank you, Nikki. Nikki, where's your phone at? What? what did, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to say that no more. <laughs> hey, our next guest, he's a multi-platinum producer, and now he's the author of Autism is My Universe. So how about we not call it a disability? He's doing great things in the community. Here to talk a little music, autism, and some of the great things that he has going on because he's on a mission, and we're going to help him achieve all those goals. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show for the very first time, Mr. Michael Buckholtz. What's happening, sir? Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it, man. Oh, no doubt, man. How you how you been, man? <laughs> man, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on, man. Hey, hey, I enjoy the calls, man, and, and just uh, from from the information that that your, your team sent over, and just you know researching you and checking you out, man. You are you, you're definitely doing doing your thing, man, and and I'm proud of you. And we'll be talking about autism, uh, but I think when uh, when I said multi platinum producer uh, in your intro, and I was talking about you being on the show, everybody was they started googling you. For for those that don't remember, when when we say multi platinum producer, what, what were some of the songs? you produce michael wow um you're taking me back now uh i uh, <laughs> wrote for, i wrote for uh mc hammer i also uh, did music production for him i wrote for groups that he had on his record label as well so mm-hmm. i mean that that being with hammer really kind of introduced me into the the world of the music industry and, and i had a blast man i absolutely had a blast and, and and that's awesome you say that because when we look back and we talk about MC Hammer and some of the some of the hits that he put out as as well as some of the groups that that spawned from that did when you were in that game back in the day did you realize how legendary MC Hammer would become today No, no, not not in the least. Uh, and uh, it goes back even further than that. Uh, Hammer and I were in the military together. Uh, oh so wow. We, yeah, so we go as far back as us both being broke and, you know, just being two puppies in the United States Navy, you know, just trying to make it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we go we go back that far. He was he was kind of like the big brother figure. Uh, I was just a nineteen year old kid, and um, you know, in the barracks, and 
I decided I wanted to buy music equipment and started making music and he saw what I was doing was pretty cool and that that was it. I mean, we just kind of stayed in contact from that point on. Wow. Well, first of all, let me say thank you for your service in our United States military. I also was uh, I did uh, three years in the United States Army back in the day, so definitely well, appreciate appreciate, that. appreciate yeah. your service. Yeah, you too. Yeah, you too. Now, you know, you you know, I gotta ask. You still got those bell bottoms y'all used to wear? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. You you know you know what it was like, man. You know that that whole uh, Navy outfit with the the whole Popeye. You know, vibe going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, we're speaking with uh, my man Michael Buckholz. Uh, not only is he a multi-platinum producer, but he is now the author of a of a book called Autism in My Universe. So, how about we not? call it a disability and congratulations on receiving uh your award for your continued work in the autism community how wow, how did this you. start for you yeah how did this start for you well um it, this actually kind of goes uh back a ways but how it actually started um was a, a, a friend of mine and his wife when i was in california uh, actually before i got into the music industry uh they had known me for about 10 years I didn't know anyone out in California, um, no family. I basically just moved away from home when I was in the military. And they just kind of befriended me and and, and knew, you know, just kind of hung out with me. And so I went back and uh, visited with them. And they started looking up, you know, different kinds of material. And they noticed some articles about, you know, Asperger syndrome and, and autism. And they started reading the articles and they contacted me and said, Michael, we're reading these articles about Asperger's and autism. We we think this is you. <laughs> and I'm mm. like, no, man, I, you know. So I looked at the articles and I was like, okay, well, I guess. I mean, I have some of those traits. And I'll never forget it. When I came back east here uh, to Georgia, I gave all these articles to my mom. I was like, these friends of mine said that this was me and I don't know. I'm just going to give them to you and see what you think. Michael, my mom burst into tears. She mm. said, this is how you and your brothers were your entire lives. Mm. And that's when she realized this is what I was dealing with. You guys have autism. You guys are autistic. And this is, this is what's going on. And I was like, wow. And on that day, uh, or at least that week, my mom set up a video camera and mm-hmm. just basically videotaped myself, my brothers, and my dad talking about how we perceive the world, how we look at it. And on that videotape, my mom still has it. On that videotape, back in 1993, um, it talks. We talk about our autistic behavior, and it was an amazing kind of first of its kind. Um, I don't know self education on what autism is and how it affects people's lives and it was an amazing thing man so that's actually how it started and from there I wanted to make sure that people in the brown community I like to call it the brown Mm -hmm. community because it does kind of encompass the culture of brown people because we're always trying to go that extra mile you know you're always told when you're younger you know you got to be better than you got to do more than you got to you know be more um, you know, aware of what's going on around you. You can't, you know, let your guard down. You got to be smarter. You got to be faster. And so that part of the culture meant that, you know, anything that it, it sort of masked, you know, the, the autistic behavior because you you had to, you know, look somebody in the eye. You know, you had to shake hands with people, even though you didn't feel like you wanted to. It was just horrible. So <laughs> these are some things that we didn't want to do growing up, but we just had to do them. You know, we felt like we had to force ourselves to do that. So, uh, but this actually started to explain what was going on uh, with our family. And and it was an amazing beginning of me looking into autism. Uh, And then one last uh, amazing thing happened is my nephew, uh, my my younger brother's uh, son. He is autistic. He he is on the autistic spectrum uh, and in special education classes. And I knew after seeing my baby brother having, you know, economic issues, you know, over his uh, 
education and some other things, you know, uh, you know, different family dynamics, you know, he, you know, he uh, feeling one way and, you know, his wife at the time feeling another way. I knew that I had to do something that would help families so that they could remain uh, together and structured, uh, financially um, able to do the things that they need to do. And uh, I, that's why I had to get involved and do something. And uh, then I started uh, the nonprofit. Awesome. Hey, guys, if you're just joining us, we're speaking with my man, Michael Buckholz. He's the author of Autism is My Universe. So how about we not call it a disability? And for, for you, Michael, being diagnosed so late, and, and, and I work with an organization uh, in autism because I have just recently uh, become a uh, part of or, or even a, just an eye opener for me about autism and what it's about and, and you hit on something uh when right. you talked about brown people and with color my mind we talk about the same thing we talk about how yeah. it, it is growing in the african american and the latino community and the part Absolutely. that scared me michael was the fact that children are um african american children are likely to be diagnosed about a year and a half later than caucasian children now for for you do you see that because of the lack of knowledge or education on the brown parents that make this so far out, or do we just miss the signs of autism altogether in the beginning stages? Uh, you know, it's interesting that you even brought that up and, and colored uh, my mind. I, I investigated that too. It, it's a fantastic um, kind of a blunt look at the dynamics of culture and, um, you know, just generational uh, kind of an, a generational ignorance, not on purpose. Uh, but I, I was looking at some statistics in California that show for some reason in the Latino and black American communities, what seems to be the prevailing uh, issue uh, is kind of complex. You're going to have a combination of families that, you know, are just ignorant of the, the, the facts surrounding, okay, my child is not speaking right now, but, um, and I thought this was interesting. One of the examples was, well, Uncle Joe, he didn't start speaking until he was five. You know, so there's this notion that there, the reason why your child is behaving a certain way is because there was somebody down the line who did it and they were fine. So then that is, is part of the uh, uh, behavior too. Um, the other thing is, uh, which is why this gets complex, is because some families are told, you know, they do get a diagnosis, and then they ignore the diagnosis. They're just like, nah, that, that couldn't be what's going on. So then they don't do the necessary things early on to help their child out. Um, another part of this, and I thought this was very interesting, one of the biggest issues is the cost disparity. You right. have a lot of families in the brown community, uh, and I'm going to add Asian to that as well. And, and the reason why I do, even though a, a, a lot of families in the Asian community seem to be more um, a, a aggressive and adept at uh, getting the resources, it's hard to get the resources. Even if you have a diagnosis for your child, what some municipalities tend to do, because a lot of the states are the ones who run these programs, you know, for the schools, they do not want to give out the money. Mm -hmm. So they will find every possible reason to say, oh, your child is fine. Oh, yeah, oh, they, they look like they're okay. And, and because that ends the conversation for many people in the brown community because they don't want to scream out to the world like, hey, my child has autism, and, you know, they, they, they're, they shy away from getting too public about it. They shy away in, in, in a – you know, like, you know, that's going to be embarrassing if I just take this all out and, you know, go all out with it. But what's interesting is that the people who get the resources that are available, they are the loudest. Uh, and the other drawback, and this is why I say this is complex, here's, here's all the dynamics. It takes lawyers sometimes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of brown families just don't have the resources to hire a battery of lawyers to get the kind of resources that they need from these municipalities because the minute you hire a lawyer, the municipalities go, okay, well, you know, we don't want to go through this fight. Here's, here's the services. That is part of the problem. And 
the Brown community needs to be uh, in, kind of engaged and know that to the loudest goes the resources. Mm-hmm. And many of the people that you see, whether they're on television, whether they're getting uh, most of the attention in the media, it's because they're the loudest. Right. That's why you see those those faces versus brown faces. And they're not, they don't have any shame in it. They're like, look, I, this is going to cost me a lot of money. The resources are here. I need to do this, and I need to be as loud as possible. So resources so that they can get the necessary um, uh, legal help, uh, that is a problem, and making sure that they are the loudest and that they're not in denial when they get the initial um, diagnosis. Th- these things are really important for the Brown community to know that we're behind them. There's other Brown folks behind them, and we're ready to battle with you. That's, that's basically where I come from, too. Definitely. And for you to say, Michael, that it's whoever is the loudest, that is so true. Because when you look at television right now, when you look at who is missing and, you know, just I'm just, just talking hypothetically, the, the, the milk carton, uh, you know, who, who makes the headlines on primetime television when a child goes up? It's those that speak the loudest, those that don't say what they want to say or get out there to the media, that child is never heard of or never found or no attention is put to it. And and I got to I got to say shout out to the to the to the gay community as well because the gay community has spoken. I mean, if you look back years, you know, 20, 30 years ago where it wasn't, you know, where we didn't talk about homosexuality in the media or in person or whatever. We didn't right. talk about it. But the gay community stepped up and said, hey, we got a voice. And you listen now, they, they're, are, they, they're just as loud as black, white, Hispanics, whatever. So everybody, you know, if you're not talking about it and making noise about it, it will never, ever be heard. And I totally agree with you. Hey, guys, if you're joining us, we're speaking with author Mr. Michael Buckholz. You can check out the book on Amazon.com. You can actually go there and grab a copy because uh, we're going to be talking about it in a second. Michael got an award, and um, we, we got to make sure uh, we, we do our part to support his mission. The book is called Autism is My Universe. So how about we not call it a disability? You can check it out at Amazon.com. You can also follow Michael on Twitter at the. Buck Nation, the Buck Nation. I don't think he's an Ohio State fan, is he? <laughs> yeah, I know. You can, that, that gets confused sometimes. <laughs> that, that, that's why I said the Buck Nation. I, yeah. I the. There you go. <laughs> now, I, I, I tell you what, the uh, uh, um, look, looking at the book, um, and, and, and I'm sure a lot of people say this to you, that the last sentence in your book is one of the most powerful sentences in the book. Wow. It's Thank not you. about the pills you give us. It's about the skills you leave us and always wow. love us unconditionally. Wow. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, that That is an actual sentiment uh, that comes from my mom. Uh, my mom is, and, and I know she's going to hear this, but I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. She's actually been, you know, the second half of the, you know, uh, the first half of the hero here, you know, uh, my dad is also to me, uh, my hero, uh, but my mom really stuck it out. She did not know what it was she needed to do to get, you know, through to us to make sure that we had all the necessary social skills to make sure that we had, uh, the necessary, um, knowledge to, to do what we needed to do to take care of ourselves uh, she was always worried that we might wind up in prison um, because people would confuse uh, our, I, I would call it tactlessness. You know, we're, you know <laughs> it's one of the social cues of autism is that, you know, we're not very tactful, kind of blunt all the time. Uh, I had to tone some of that down. I learned some tools to keep me from being so blunt and so, you know, kind of, you know, not having any filter <laughs> when it comes to saying mm-hmm. things. Uh, and, and that just goes to honesty. You know, I like just to flat out just tell people, you know, what the way things are. And uh, it, it's helped me in, in my career, obviously, uh, in the music industry, because you kind of have to, you know, not take any junk in that right. arena. So so it's, it's kind of helped me in that uh, aspect. But she was really the one who gave us, 
uh, as, and I was listening, you know, these little sound bites, these little things uh, that she would say to people. Um, and my mom was, <laughs> when we were in high school, she was, she was, well, actually grade school too. She was known as murder mom because she didn't take any mess from the teachers. We, mm-hmm. we had to be taught. We had to be schooled and, uh, she wasn't about to take any mess about, you know, how we were to get educated. Uh, I, I give her all the credit for being tough and advocating for us, even though she didn't, as I put it, get the memo. She was not told that we were um, autistic or that we had any um, signs of Asperger's. She just didn't know. So she did the best that she could, and she's 71 years old, and she is still wow. hanging in there. And uh, so I, I really commend her and say, you know, props to mom and, of course, dad, who's my hero. And, um, you know, I'm trying to get like him. He's he's just a stand-up uh, genius of a guy. But, you know, that that's that's kind of, you know, where, you know, where I'm at with how I look at things, that, that last statement in that book was really important because you have to, you have to believe in the brilliance of children. You have to believe that there's a reason to give them skills, to give them something so that they, you know, inspire them to, to be better, you know, instead of expecting them to be better, you know, that's an expectation is something that we have and that belongs to us. And you can't give an expectation to someone. You have to inspire them to be good, inspire them to be, a great uh, person. So that's that's where I'm at, man. That's what that means. <laughs> wow. Hey, let me ask you this. I I I gotta I gotta ask you this, man. I, I got this hot 16 that I've been working on for about four years, Michael. Um, <laughs> and I'm just wondering if you got a track over there laying around that you that you have used in a while, or you you put it out there as a single or something. Just let, let just let your boy know, because I'm telling you, I I will treat it right, okay? <laughs> uh, look. Look, I, I'm always – music is my life, man. So I'm, I'm, I've always got music. Uh, I've got tons of tracks playing around. And uh, like I said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a musical guy. That's So what you, what you need, man, you got it. Hey, I got All right, that'll work. That'll work. Hey, did you, did, you meet, um, did you meet my man Xavier Lewis yet? I, I, I saw, oh, my I saw goodness. that. goodness. Oh, man, you said – here's what's funny, man. You just said Xavier, Xavier Lewis. When you said that, Chills just went up my because I when we met, he has just such an amazingly positive, powerful spirit about him. He he is the real deal. Xavier Lewis, yes, he is. XL is the real deal, man. He he is going to be a superstar, and mm-hmm. anything that he needs, I want to help him do that. I don't care if I if he wants me to, you know, carry his instruments. And you know his bags and luggage on tour. That man is going to be bad, and he, <laughs> I, I just can't say enough good things about uh, Xavier. Xavier, shout shout shouts out to you, man. Um, your family, man. It was great to meet you, man. It it it, it was a fantastic meeting, man. And and uh, I'm ready to meet him again. I, I I was so excited to to see him, man. I, I regret not taking a picture with him, man. I just I felt so naked when I left. I didn't have a I had a photo. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, um, um, and and yeah, shout out to Xavier and Reggie Bernard yeah, yeah. and Old Millennium. Oh, so, Reggie, yes. Yeah, th- those guys are awesome. As a matter of fact, we're doing an event together on the 25th, I think it is, Michael. So I'm going to shoot you the invite. Um, I got to come, when, man. I got to go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll shoot you the invite. <laughs> I'm going to see I'm going to see if I can get I'm going to see if I can get XL to do a couple of songs for me to, for for that night, but um yeah, we definitely <laughs> definitely got it. And, and then we get, we 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 all get in that Instagram shot that I know we all want to get in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But now he he is definitely good people, and I've been knowing XL for about I, I guess going about a year and a half now, and uh, it's the first time that I introduced him on stage, Michael. Um, like you said, man, he ripped what it, and you can just spirit. see success. Yeah, you can what just see success. Spirit, man. Yes. Definitely. Hey, this is what I want to talk about, Michael. And it, 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 ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, and, and please, i got to say hello to um, Gwen in the chat room, Power Edge Mark. My man KG is in the chat room. What up, KG? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michael. I get, I get thrown off sometimes. Um, but, um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I got to – okay, I'm sorry. Talking about music, did you do Gaining Momentum? If you yeah, say that, I'm about to cry. Oh, my God. Michael, don't say that. You know what? 
rest in peace, sister, about seven years ago. I lost her to right. kidney failure. And mm-hmm. before she passed away, Michael, this is a true story. That MC Hammer song, when that, the, the, when that MC Hammer song came out, every time I was with her up in D.C., she would always, always play that song. So Wow. You talking about? I got chills when 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 I went to your site and I saw the video up there um, for 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 uh, the the GoFundMe dot com uh, oh, site yeah. and I saw the video up there. Michael, that is my sis. That was my sister's favorite song. So shout out. Oh to my you. The goodness. song was hot. Yeah, the song was hot too. So. Oh my god! Thank you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Wow. Oh my goodness. Shout, shout out to uh, Felton Pilot, uh, the uh, co-owner of. Uh, Confunction, big time Grammy winning multi platinum guy. He taught me everything I know, um, which is how I got to you know into the position of uh, producing that record. Hammer, those guys, man. I appreciate that the opportunity to do that. That that song was it was it was it was me. That was all me. It was my opportunity to say, hey man, I have a style of music that I think will mix with Hammer in a way that was very danceable, very kind of timeless even in a way. Uh, and I don't know, I, I just, I had a lot of fun doing that song and, and a lot of people had a lot of fun uh, in that video. It, it was just an amazing thing. man. Amazing. Wow. Well, awesome, man. Well, and, I, and I'm, and I'm but... honored. I'm honored that, that, that your sister really used that song as inspiration. And I, that was, that's, that's a beautiful sentiment. I, I don't even have any words for that. Yeah, yes, yeah, she did, and and I know she's l- looking down and, and and listening to the show from from the wow. heavens, and to just to know how powerful that song was to her, and know that I'm talking to the guy that did a song. Oh my God, I'm about to cry. So Michael, I'm about to, to excuse my language. I'm about to kick your ass off the show in a minute. So <laughs> before you make me cry on real thought, so let's not do that. All right, let's not do wow. that. Let's talk about. Let's, oh, let's talk about. <laughs> let's talk about um let's let's continue to talk about your work that you do and as a matter of fact yes. um you're actually uh you received the 2012 International Natural Autistic Award uh uh this year up in Canada, correct? Yes, for for entrepreneur uh of the for year. entrepreneur. I, I, that, look, it, that is incredibly um unexpected and and humbling. I I, I don't even know what to say. I I'm just it, you know it's it's not even about me. Um, the nonprofit that I started, Aid for Autistic Children Foundation, which you can find on the internet um, um, uh, under uh, www.aacfinc.org. That's Alpha Alpha C is in Cat Frank Inc. Like I N C dot org. Uh, that organization is really the reason why anybody I think is paying any attention to what I'm doing because. I started that organization to uh, help families, Mm -hmm. uh, caretakers, autistic adults, and of course, if the families are being helped, they they're able to help their children as well. I mean, to you know, to go uh, into that phase of their lives, uh, to give them a financial second chance. And what that means is, I built this company, set it up to give people what's called uh, debt forgiveness. Because a lot of these, these uh, families, especially in the brown communities and, and some of the, the, the poorer communities, don't have this limitless, uh, you know, limitless resources uh, of cash, or some areas just don't have the resources to get. You know, how we, how we talked earlier about being loud and making sure you can get the resources. Well, in some places, no matter how loud you are, they just don't have the resources. So there needed to be some type of program that would empower families financially, uh, give them a second chance, uh, forgive their debt, uh, the debt that they accrued trying to help their child, whether it's occupational therapy. And that stuff comes out of their pockets. There's no insurance for that, for a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, and again, those, those resources are limited to the people who are loudest and get them. So with that disparity, Something had to come in that said, okay, we're going to help you out. We're going to kind of assess your finances, get you, you know, into a certain uh, financial situation, give you some financial um, uh, education. You know, we, I, I teamed up with 
SunTrust Bank. Uh, this has just happened recently, where they said that they would help me do um, seminars for these families free free of charge. They said that they would just you know come in with their expertise, and we would give people kind of a general basic um, financial you know lessons on how to make sure that once they're you know debt free, they stay debt free. They're able to um, participate in the financial work in you know workings of our economy. Uh, so that they are not stifled to give their children uh, the best that they can give them. And the same thing for autistic adults, so that they're not, you know, set up to fail um, mm-hmm. the uh, unemployment uh, among um, in the United States among the autistic community. Autistic adults is 81%. I think it's actually higher than that now. So mm-hmm. that's crazy. It, it, you know, there's no reason why these brilliant people should not be employed somewhere. And there are programs designed to employ them, you know, and companies ready to do so. So it's making sure that they have an, uh, a, an avenue of access financially. So that's what the organization does. And it just and it needs funding. I mean, it, it's a nonprofit. So um, part of me, you know, doing this and, and going to Canada to uh, receive this award is to put the word out, to let people know mm-hmm. this organization exists and it's supported by the community, by the national community, by the local community, um, in some cases the worldwide community, which is, uh, you know, about, I'm going to be, there's going to be people from Israel there, India, the U.K. So this is a big deal, and I want to make sure that people are on board and aware that even though I am focused on the local area here in Georgia, here in my hometown, uh, adopted hometown, uh, Macon, mm-hmm. uh, I really do uh, see this as a national um, situation that needs attention. I set the organization up that way. Uh, we can accept any kind of donation. I don't care if somebody, you know, sent us an airplane. You know, we can auction that baby off and use it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. w- I, this organization is set up. It's a 501c3. Uh, it's it's you know totally legitimate, ready to go. Um, I am just I'm just ready to do some things and it's not about me. This is about the community, the autistic community, and empowering them and, and giving everybody a hand up so that they can uh you know, move on uh independently and, and, and make some good uh, uh choices and ha- and have some good lives for their children and the adults too. So there it is. That's- Talking about that's what I'm talking about, and the and the uh, foundation, ladies and gentlemen, is called A for Autistic Children Foundation. The website is aacfinc dot org. And, and Michael, how can we continue to support you and help you on this mission to accomplish all the goals that you need to every single day? Okay, the 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 number one thing is, and this is where my bluntness comes in. <laughs> We need funding. I mean, I can't do anything without you guys. So I'm actually asking you guys uh, for your support, for your donations. Um, you can go to uh, the non uh, to the website, uh, the aacfinc.org, and there is a donate button there. You can click on that, and it will send you to the donation page, and it will give you what you know, give you a rundown of ways that you can donate. Uh, and there is a donation button there that you can click on to. Also, when you go to the uh, home page, there's a little uh, button there that also allows you to donate uh, through Network for Good. Network for Good. It's an organization that is uh, BBC, you know, a- approved. Uh, you cannot become a part of that organization unless you got your stuff together. <laughs> so uh, you can also. Uh, donate through Network for Good. That's for people who go to the site and are like, I don't know about the site. Well, go to Network for Good uh, with that little button, and it will take you to their site, and you can donate through there. Uh, so there's all kinds of ways that people can do that. Now, uh, also supporting, um, you know, just whatever it is that I'm going to be doing for the community, whether it's um, the book, uh, proceeds from the book also, uh, go to the administrative costs uh, for the nonprofit. That's for us to keep the doors open and the phones running so that we can uh, continue on uh, our quest to make sure we have all the funding we need. And by the way, this project works. Uh, we did help a family, actually help them to get a home, cleared their debt, gave them some debt forgiveness. Uh, it's a family out of uh, Mississippi. 
uh, lost their home in Katrina. Um, it, it was a really, really not good situation. And if there was any maiden voyage that we could have done to assist anyone, this that was it. That's what I'm talking about. Well, that I was, tell that you was what, the worst case scenario. Wow. I tell you what, it's been a blessing having you on, Michael. And, and, and like no, I said, thank, thank you for you know, having me. Thank you for having me. We we talk about the what is it seven degrees of separation or six degrees of separation, <laughs> whatever that number is. It is also true because, like I said, with well, when I went to the site and I saw the gaining momentum, I had to ask you that. And it, 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 you know what? I'm about to change you by because I'm about to cry, Michael. Don't do this to me, Michael. I'm telling you. Hey, do do me a favor. Do me a favor when um uh, before you get out of here, please tell everybody how to keep in touch with you and tell them about the website oh. again and how we can donate because before I'm off, well after I'm off the air tonight, I, I I'm definitely gonna step up and do my part to assist you and we gotta gotcha. continue this friendship and this relationship as well. Well, I thank you. Uh, once again, everybody, uh, you can follow me on Facebook. Uh, it's under my name, Michael Buckholtz. It's B U C K H O L T Z. And I'm also on Twitter at The Buck Nation, T-H-E-B-U-C-K Nation, uh, and uh, also the website, www.aacfinc.org, and uh, get involved. Get involved. And, and you know what? I'm going to uh, shoot you those the date where we're going to do the event with um, with, with, with uh, Xavier Lewis, so that's going to be fun I'm to there. have you and uh, I got I got a front row seat for you. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and, and please tell Gwen wow. and uh, yeah, please tell uh, Gwen and, and Tanya that okay. I said uh, yes. Tanya, I said I hello, have please. To, I have to shout out to them uh, to uh, Team TKMG, Gwendolyn Robeson, um, Tanya Atkins. You guys, thank you very much for taking me on. I know I am a hectic, crazy person, <laughs> but. <laughs> They they said thank you for your ball of energy. We, we're going to do some things. So thank you. Shouts out to to uh, to my team. Wow. Well, Michael, thank you very much, man. And I'll, I'll talk to you soon, man. Let's continue this mission together, okay? All right. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. No doubt, no doubt, ladies and gentlemen. That's Michael Buckholz. You can check him out on Twitter at the Buck Nation. Uh, follow him on Twitter. You can also go grab a copy of the book. The book is called Autism Is My Universe. So how about we not call it a disability? Hey, thank you very much, Michael. Hey, when we come back, I got chills right now. Oh, my gosh. When we come back, our sports guy, Keith Roberts, is in the building. And also coming up, my man, Mo Stiegel. Mo Stiegel is answering the question, are you marriage material? Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Real time. You know what? Um, I, 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 we orchestrated something phenomenal right here. You, you guys know we just had Michael Buckholz on the show. Guess what? We, we got him back on the show because I had a surprise for him. I had a, had a, had a big surprise for him. Hey, um, can, we can open open Michael's mic up for me real quick. Nigga. Michael, what's happening? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Thank you, got- thank you very much, man, for calling back in. Oh, man. I, I, I appreciate it, man. Any, anything for you, brother. Hey, I, I want to I want to do something real quick. One of one of my favorite songs, uh, and and this is this goes out to uh, to Yes Atlanta. I'm hosting an event uh, called Yes Atlanta um, this week. Oh, now that next month is uh, in in Atlanta called Yes Atlanta. Shout out to Keith Robinson, Sean O'Keefe, and one of the songs that made the video uh, that made the 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 show itself is called Give Back, and uh, I think it's playing in the background right now. Is that it? <laughs> October 20th. Thank you, Keith. I got the date, Keith. It's called Give Back. And the 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 guy who did this song is a good friend of mine. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's been on the show a whole bunch of times. But we, we, we pretty cool. I got his phone up and text him and say what's up to him. And uh, I, say, I, I text him and said, hey, you, can you call in for me for one second? So, ladies and gentlemen... Welcome to the show. He's got a hot song on uh, iTunes right now called Georgia Clay, and this song right here called Give Back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, my man Xavier Lewis. What yo, yo. Yo. Oh, oh no, oh, 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 good. The one and only Michael McFadden. I got, yo, 
Yo, listen, man. Y'all out there is, yo, look, man. Listen, listen, listen. Whew. It's too much going in on this call in right now. Mike, how you doing, man? <laughs> Xavier Lewis, XL. It is a pleasure to hear your voice again, man. The hey, love man. was real. It was wow. electric. Wow, it was electric, man. man. Hey, man, we about to definitely, you know, some good things in the mix, some real good things in the mix, man. One billion unite, man. I'm just so honored, and I'm so thankful, man, that you, you know what I'm saying, you you, you going you gonna, you gonna to bless me with, with, with all your expertise. I just so, told somebody today, I said, yo, if, 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 if I've ever met a genius, well, I finally met one. I, I've been talking about you ever since, man, so I'm just honored, <laughs> man. Wow, that's that's always unexpected and humbling. I I don't I can't say enough good about you. And and let me just say this to everybody that's listening: uh, XL is not going to do this. Maybe is not going to do this, but I, I'm going to do it. He has such a grounded, humble spirit. He he is so generous with his energies, with his music, with his with the things that he wants to do positive. I, I don't think I don't think the world is really really ready for what it is that he's about to unleash on it. Uh, I have seen this kind of energy before, and his name was MC Hammer, wow. and uh, <laughs> and the the kind of the kind of kindness and goodness that he wants to really put out there. He he is so I think. Uh, ready to do it. I mean, the way he's planning to do it is just so amazing and and also kind of, you know, dipped in tons of genius as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, wow. you, say all you want about me, but I, I got to I'm just going to put it out there. Everybody, you are you've got to really really pay attention to this guy. He's got next. He's really really going to be doing some big wow. things. Yeah, and wow, if wow. if I I said it before. I'll say it again. If I could, you know, if I just carry your bags onto the plane or something, oh, you know, man, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all right. You know, if man, I just, you know, you get to breakfast what? in the morning. It's all good. You know, man, get you go, man. <laughs> Whatever, man. Whatever. Yo, Mike McFadden, listen, man. We in a meeting this week. It was so humbling to be in a meeting. I was really about to sit on the floor. Like, mm. you, you, don't, you don't even understand. And, you know, for people out there, for people out there, you know, I, I posted something on my Facebook page. I, I, I believe I posted it either today or yesterday, but it was a post that basically was just saying, like, I don't care who you are, you know what I'm saying, or what you have. Don't ever basically, you know what I'm saying, forget where your blessings come from. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was just so humbling, man. It was so humbling, you know what I'm saying, to be in Mike's presence, man. I mean, this is a guy that... I mean, wow, like, you know, any aspiring artist of, of especially, you know what I'm saying, will look at Mike's resume and just be like, you know what, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm focused and I'm, I'm continuing to work hard just to really just, just, just touch a little bit of what God has blessed him to see and accomplish, man. And uh, it was so humbling, man. Literally, I was going to sit on the floor, man. And that, wow. you know, that was just, that was respect, man. But Mike McFadden, I appreciate you for bringing me in, man. Hey, no um, doubt. Res- hey guys, I, I wanted to say, um, I want to say thank you guys both for coming in and um, and and, and calling back in too, Michael. I, I wanted to get XL on the line because I wanted y'all to talk again and just <laughs> put bring that that power here, and you can see it. And Michael, I just want to let you know this that I attempted to do. I just want to do eight balls on one of Xavier Lewis' songs, and he turned me down. So I had to go back into the studio. I tell you, man, your mic's plugged all the way up, boy. I tell you. I had, I had to go back in the studio. So, hey, Michael, thank you very much, man. Lock no, me man, in, it was a pleasure. please, and we'll talk. You're and XL, XL, I'm telling you what, we got to. Excel, we got a meeting tomorrow, yes, Atlanta, and I told you, I texted you the other day, and I told Reggie yeah. B that your name is coming up, so I'll probably be hitting you tomorrow, man, to give you the details on yes, Atlanta for October the 20th, so I, I'll just let you know about that, though. Hey, right. man, you know what, Mike McFadden, that's what's up, and real quick before we get up out of here, y'all, look, man, everybody that's tuned in right now, real talk, real talk is really about to go down, y'all. One hmm. billion unite, give back, it's about to go this thing is about to blaze up, blaze up nationwide, man. Big ups to Mike. Real talk. 
Big ups to Michael McFadden. That's real talk for sure. And I just want y'all to know, man, go to YouTube. Shut it down right now. YouTube.com backslash the antidote, A-N-T-I-D-O-T-E-T-E. And y'all go in and, 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 and like the fan fan page on Facebook, the antidote to harmony, no man. That's no doubt. All right. Michael, guys, thank you Michael. very much. XL, thank talk, you very Michael. much. Yes. yes. You. Michael yes. McFadden. Michael McFadden. Real talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, as like a you. matter of fact, hey, when we come back, my man Mo Stegall's in the building. And guess what? This song right here, you're going to hear it in his entirety. It's called Give Back by my man Xavier Lewis. Fellas, yeah, thank yeah. you very much. I'll let y'all, okay? All right, Appreciate you. Peace. <laughs> 